Before starting to watch this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you'll not miss out any of my upcoming videos. And please make sure to check out these merch which I have designed by myself. The links are in the description of this video. And uh, it would be really nice if you consider buying any of these. Now, most of you guys be knowing what GOAT is. Now, you'll be wondering what Cedar GOAT actually is. And uh, it's uh, it's not necessary to know all the things about Cedar Gout. Uh, it, you just need to know the common differences between Gout and Cedar Gout, which I'll be talking about in this video. So I already made a video on Gout, and the link will be provided in the end of this video. You can watch it after watching this video. So the basic difference between Gout and Cedar Gout is the nature of crystals which are deposited in the joints. In Gout, the crystals deposited in the joints are monosodium urate crystals. Whereas in Cedar the crystals deposited are calcium pyrophosphate uh, crystals, okay? So there'll be deposition of calcium uh, pyrophosphate crystals in Cedar The real name, the, the actual name of uh, the Cedar uh, is actually calcium pyrophosphate crystal disease because of the nature of, uh, because of the crystals which are deposited in the joints which are actually calcium pyrophosphate. Okay, just remember that calcium pyrophosphate crystal disease is also called a Cedar Gout and this can be used interchangeably and these diseases are also called as chondrocalcinosis so basically they have three names okay there are three main types of Cedar Gout namely sporadic, hereditary and secondary uh, the hereditary, hereditary form of Cedar Gout can be autosomal dominant variety in which there will be early manifestation of the disease in the patients and all that and there can be germline mutations in the transport of proteins involved in the transport of the calcium pyrophosphate uh, in which uh, if there is germline mutation of that particular transporter they can be uh, the, uh, that, le uh, that can lead to the development of pseudo gout in the patients I'm talking about sporadic cases sporadic cases are usually idiopathic for which the exact cause is not known now let's talk about secondary CPPD uh, in a bit detail okay there are various causes for secondary uh, secondary calcium pyrophosphate crystal disease uh, this includes previous joint damage hyperparathyroidism hemochromatosis hypomagnesemia hypothyroidism ochronosis which is a metabolic condition uh, where there will be excess of homogenetic acid uh, deposition in the tissues in the body okay and diabetes is also uh, can, uh, diabetes can also predispose the patient to uh, calcium pyrophosphate crystal disease or pseudogout okay so uh, the exact reason for why all these diseases cause pseudogout is not clearly known however uh, there is a theory that, that is a um, the pathophysiology is uh, vaguely known uh, i'll be telling about the pathophysiology so the path of exact pathophysiology of the pseudogout is actually unknown but um, what uh, what has been considered uh, as a probable uh, reason is that there will be destruction of arti arti uh, articular cartilage proteoglycans and they get degraded. Okay, So if these proteoglycans get degraded, they will induce formation of the crystals within the joint cavity. Okay, So there will be formation of calcium pyrophosphate crystals in the joint cavity. This is one of the um, theories which are proposed for the formation of crystals in uh, pseudo gout okay and as i uh, as as what happens in gout there'll be formation the the this these reactions are actually um, mediated the inflammation is actually mediated by activation of inflammasome in macrophages in the same way it happens in gout if you want to know uh, if you want to know the pathogenesis of gout in a bit more detail, I've actually clear, uh, explained it clearly with the help of uh, flowcharts and all that in my video on gout. So make sure to check it out after watching this video. So the morphology, uh, there will be chalky white deposits because of the uh, calcium pyrophosphate crystals. So these crystals can get deposited in the articular cartilage, menisci, and um, and it can also uh, get deposited in the intervertebral discs and everywhere. And uh, when observed under mi microscope after staining, they appear as oval blue purple aggregates. Okay, these crystals uh, appear like that. And uh, on contrary to the crystals which are observed uh, in gout, where there will be chalky and there will be spine like, uh, but in case of, and they are actually sharp in case of gout, but in case of uh, pseudo gout, the crystals are actually rhomboid. And the other contrary thing in, with respect to uh, gout is actually in pseudogout, the crystals are positively birefringent, whereas in gout, 
uh, the crystals are negatively birefringent. Okay, that is one another difference between pseudo gout and gout. The clinical course. In most of the patients, it is uh, usually asymptomatic. Okay, they won't have any manifestations, but in in about uh, in about a, a, a significant proportion of the uh, patients, what happens is they can develop arthritis, which can be subacute or acute or chronic arthritis. Okay, and the duration of uh, each episode of arthritis depends with each patient. Okay, it can it can uh, it can be there for uh, hours or it can last for days or weeks. It depends on individual patients. And on contrary to gout, the most common site uh, of pseudo gout is actually knees uh, followed by the wrist but as you guys know the most common site of uh, uh, formation of crystals in gout is actually the first metatarsophalangeal joint okay so i've explained that also in my video on gout so make sure it's uh, watch that video too if you came to the end of this video uh, you can follow me on the social media um, on instagram facebook so if you can check out my blog on these websites, the links are given in the description of this video. And don't forget to check out this merch, it should be really nice if you consider buying any of these. Thank you so much for watching this video. So make sure to check my video on gout. And in the next video, I'll be talking about the pharmacotherapy of gout. Okay. So make sure to watch all these three videos to get your concepts on gout very clear. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.